Hey and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the five things that surprised me the most about working as a mechanical engineer after university. So whether you're already an engineering student or you're considering to go into the field, I hope this video gives you a new perspective and helps you make a better decision about your career. And if you're already an engineer as well, then I would love to hear from you what surprised you the most when you first started working in this job. My name is Anna and I'm a German mechanical engineer based in Sweden. On this channel, I talk about my journey as a young engineer and I share everything I learned along the way. Last week, I actually talked about how I became a mechanical engineer. So I thought the next logical thing to talk about is what it's now like to work as an engineer. And I'm basically making this video for my younger self because I think when I was struggling with my courses or I wasn't really sure if engineering was for me, it would have really helped me to see exactly what I'm working towards and to also know that some of my struggles or worries were actually completely unnecessary because working in engineering is a lot different from what I had expected when I started university and it mostly surprised me for the better. Maybe let's start with a quick introduction of myself so that you know where my perspective is actually coming from and can take it with a grain of salt. I have both a bachelor and a master of science in mechanical engineering and I also have another master of science in entrepreneurship and innovation management. During my studies I already started working at different technical companies and now as of three months I'm working full-time as an engineer at a battery manufacturing company in Sweden. So I've not been working for that long yet but there's already so many things that I see are very different from what I had expected so let's talk about them. Number one, your university major does not matter. Now, this is a little bit of an overstatement. Uh, I'm not saying don't get a degree or that you don't need a degree to be an engineer. In most cases, you do. But maybe don't worry so much about the exact major that you are getting. This might not be true for all companies, but from the job postings that I've seen or applied to and where I have worked, they do ask you to have some sort of technical or science related degree uh, but usually the exact major does not matter at all it will be way more important what your interests are what kind of internships maybe you did or if you already have a little bit of knowledge about a specific field that can also help but you don't necessarily need to prove it with a major that fits exactly in that area so in my case this is actually true as well i studied mechanical engineering but now i work more in something you could call an industrial engineering or production engineering position. And of course, there's also a major that's uh, dedicated to production engineering, which I could have taken, but this was never important when I tried out for this job. And some of my colleagues, for example, have a physics degree or electrical engineering degree or logistics degree or different kind of degrees that can all be kind of tied to this field but they're not necessarily fitting exactly to the job description and related to that i think it's also really common and can be an advantage to move around your field and also across different fields so when you choose your major you're by all means not deciding your career you still have all the options open if you like point number two is math is overrated now, <laughs> this might seem a little bit weird since we talk about engineering. Math is an important part of this. And I'm not saying that you don't need math or you don't need physics. I'm just saying that what you did in university is probably a lot harder than what you're going to do on the job, at least on a day to day basis. There are definitely some very detail oriented engineering positions where you have to apply abstract math every day but this is more the exception at least from what I've seen. I do think it's good that in university you hear all of the different math disciplines that you know need to know. You hear a little bit of everything, you learn a little bit electrical engineering maybe, a little bit of control theory and a bunch of other hard things <laughs> and for me I thought 
okay, if I cannot do these things, then I cannot be a good engineer. And I just want to say that this is not true. If you're maybe not excelling at math in university, maybe a kind of average or even struggling with it, you still have a good shot at being an excellent engineer. I mean, it's useful that you'd learn, I don't know, calculus, linear algebra, all of that stuff, control theory. Definitely useful to know so that whenever this topic comes up in a project of yours, then you remember and you have an easier re-entrance into that topic. But you do not need to know it by heart or be able to apply it at any point on the spot. That's actually the opposite of how you want to be working as an engineer. You want to make an informed decision. You want to research, you want to talk to experts that know the field in and out. It would not be a good idea for one person to try to know it all and apply it all. But maybe that's obvious to everyone else. Just to me, it actually was not. So I was, like I said in my last video, in school, you know, I was average at math and basic mechanics course. And I was not really excelling at them. And that actually discouraged me when it shouldn't have. But uh, please do take these courses seriously. You do need to get through them. And it is good to train yourself to get over hard things because that is something that you're gonna continuously need to do. Maybe just not in the way that you would expect from university. Point number three, you must be able to work with absolutely anyone. This is something that I think university does not prepare you for very well, because at least in my case, we had a lot of group projects where we had a technical task to solve and kind of had to divide the different roles. But usually all of us were either exactly the same major, mechanical engineering, or very closely related majors. Maybe there were some industrial engineers in there, maybe some production engineers. But we did not work together with people from manufacturing, such as technicians, or sales, purchasing, human resources, logistics packaging, the specific disciplines with which you need to work as an engineer, they will vary depending on the product that the company is making where you work or your specific position in the company. But you are definitely going to need to work with a lot of very different disciplines. So you need to be able to vary the level at which you explain technical solutions or technical problems and you also need to be able to see a problem from these different perspectives to understand for example what does someone in purchasing prioritize and why is your solution maybe not catering to their needs so yeah um, be prepared to work with anyone and be willing to talk about technical topics with people who are not very deep in the field or not really interested to be <laughs> to hear it on on a very detailed level so yeah teamwork is a very integral part of engineering my point number four is communication is everything this kind of ties together with the previous point you need to be able to communicate with different professions what i want to stress here is probably most of your job is going to be communication. You will most likely be managing your own project, communicating either directly with suppliers or with customers or both, and you better be good at communicating. This means writing efficient emails, structuring your meetings well so that you actually talk about the topics you want to talk about, you answer the questions that you want to answer, and that everyone actually has a purpose to be in this meeting and being proactive at communicating different things to different people in your company or in your team that need to know this information and see your project from their perspective what do they need to know so let's take an example if you want to build a conveyor for a production machine in a factory you need to make sure that the people that manage the site they know that there's a conveyor going there. You need to make sure that the utilities that you need, such as electricity, that they are being considered when constructing the building. You need to make sure that there's a budget for the equipment that you're purchasing allocated 
by your company. And these are just small examples of a lot of things that go into doing a project. So I just want to stress, um, if you feel like you're not that good at communicating, work on it. I mean, there's tons of resources out there on how to structure a good meeting, how to write a good email even. It sounds basic, but it's actually very profound. And um, which stakeholders does a technical project have? Stakeholders meaning people that well, hold a stake in your project that have an interest, for example, a monetary interest or information interest in your project that you need to keep informed, that you need to com communicate with and yeah, just be aware of this. Work on this if you think this is not your strength because it will be very important. I would go as far as saying that communication is just as important as technical knowledge when you work as an engineer. Point number five I call it's a small manufacturing world. So what I mean by that is that since I work in a manufacturing company, I realized how small the manufacturing industry is, especially if you're working in such a specific niche. There are suppliers that you just cannot get around. It's very important to build good relationships with everyone that you meet, basically. And everyone always knows all the news. <laughs> so pretty much like if you're in a super small, I don't know, music scene, maybe you like classical indie metal, I don't know if that exists, but let's just say it does, uh, then whenever there's a new band or someone drops a new album, you're gonna know about it and everyone's gonna talk about it. It's pretty much exactly the same way in the battery scene or the battery industry, that if there's a new startup promising to build the next big gigafactory or someone drops a new electrolyte or anode or cathode material, then everyone's gonna know about it and everyone's gonna talk about it. And I think that's kind of fun <laughs> how as soon as you work in the specific field, everything you see uh, has a battery in it. <laughs> and also what ties into that is that you will be working probably with suppliers all over the world, but even still uh, you will keep seeing the same names everywhere and yeah, this was just very interesting to me when I started and continues to be how some names that I never heard about before I started working in this industry, now I see them everywhere and they're super big companies. It's just since they don't make consumer goods, they're maybe not uh, known to, you know, <laughs> regular people. Um, but yeah, w once you start working in this industry, you will know them. Okay, so these were the five things that surprised me the most when I first started working as an engineer. I hope this was interesting to you. I think the main point to take from all of this is that while the technical side of engineering is of course very important, the soft skill side is also very important and challenging. The things that you will struggle with the most are probably not going to be technical. They're going to be related to communication, to negotiations with suppliers or customers to keeping your project on track and on timeline and on budget. These things are going to be probably the biggest struggles. I plan to talk more in the future about how I'm working on these skills. So let me know if you want to see that. And if you like this video, please leave me a like and feel free to subscribe for more engineering content. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you in my next video. <sighs> but I think this will do. Yeah.